Today on Penguin Propaganda, I'll go over making Fedora 36 more user-friendly with a bevy of upgrades. This will cover setting up RPM Fusion so you have access to more packages to install. Think non-free. The GNOME Extension Manager, getting an application bar in case you don't like the default minimalist UI, Anaconda, Chromium, and an open source version of VS Code. So to start off, we have a base install of Fedora 36. I'll begin by turning on dark mode because nobody wants to look at this bright screen. Next up, let's go ahead and update the system using the included software installer. I realize everyone has probably seen a software update before, so this is sped up. Feel free to slow it down if you enjoy progress bars and reboots. Now that this is complete, let's go ahead and get RPM Fusion installed. This will merge many commonly used repositories into one install, making it much easier to find the software you're looking for. We'll just open up Firefox and go to rpmfusion.org. From rpmfusion.org, click on Enable RPM Fusion on your system. We will want to install both the free and non-free versions. Simply copy the script here and run it in a terminal. After this, let's install the AppStream metadata. We can just copy the commands in these next steps from the screen and run them in terminal. In this case, it's sudo dnf group update core. We will want to add the multimedia post install. Just copy the command and once again toss it in your terminal. We will also install the sound and video patches. And once again, we're just gonna copy the code and paste it in our terminal. Now let's fix the application menu so it isn't hidden by default. The first step for this is to install GNOME extensions. Now we will also install GNOME tweaks. Keep in mind, GNOME tweaks may be a bit buggy with this new release of GNOME. We can get these installed through the install menu. Just search for extensions and you'll see both of them at the top. Now for the fun part. We can finally install dash to dock cosmic to enable a menu bar. And by the way, I did test out the Ubuntu dock earlier. Uh, it's a bit more buggy than the cosmic one. So we're sticking with cosmic. Some of you may not like having the bar and that's great. Please leave a comment below telling me how using the super key or clicking on activities at the top is superior. We will be installing the extension using the gnome.org extensions page. The URL is extensions.gnome.org. Just do a search for dash to dock cosmic to find the extension. In order to get the browser plugin for the extensions page working, click the click here to enable browser extension and then close the browser and reopen and then get back to the page.
Now you can click the on button in the right corner to install the extension. So now that the toolbar is all set up, let's get to Anaconda. First, let's just head to their website uh, and get to the Linux page. That's going to be at https colon slash slash docs.anaconda.com slash anaconda slash install slash Linux. We can use the script here for the Red Hat installer. Just copy the yum code and run it in your terminal. As you can see here, we need to make sure we run this as sudo. After this, we need to get to the download page by clicking on Anaconda Installer for Linux. From the download page, just click on Download to save the script in your Downloads folder. We can access the Downloads folder by just clicking on the folder icon in Firefox. From here, we just open a terminal in the folder. Now we make this script executable by using chmod plus x space anaconda tab so it autocompletes. Once that's done, just run the shell script by doing dot slash anaconda tab again so it autocompletes. A quick note when you want to get out of that license agreement, just hit Q. You'll need to exit the terminal and reopen before you can launch Anaconda. To launch it through the terminal, just type anaconda-navigator. Now that we have this working, let's go ahead and make icons for Jupiter, Spider, and Anaconda so we can toss them in the launcher or just run them from the Applications menu. There are desktop files provided by the Anaconda install for Jupyter and Spider, but none for Anaconda. Now these files are in Anaconda 3 slash share slash applications under your home directory. Just go ahead and copy the Jupyter desktop file to the same location, and we'll rename it to Anaconda and then open it with a text editor. We will change Jupyter Notebook to Anaconda Navigator, run Jupyter Notebook to run Anaconda Navigator, and the exec line to Anaconda Dash Navigator. Now we just copy these three files into the .local share applications folder that's within our home directory. Now if you can't see the .local directory, just hit Control H and it'll show hidden files and folders. I've noticed that sometimes the icons show up right away, and sometimes you have to log out and log back in for them to show up. So we'll just re-log here. I like to test everything out one time just to make sure nothing went wrong. As you can see here, all three are launching fine. We've got Anaconda, Jupiter, and Spider, and everything seems to look okay. I was not able to find Code OSS or VS Codium in the software manager, but I was able to go to the Git repository for this application and follow the instructions there. The URL is github.com slash vscodium slash vscodium.
Scroll down to Install with Package Manager and click the Paul Carity link. This will take you to a GitLab page with a bit of terminal code you can cut and paste to get the repository set up for you. After this, you'll be able to do the install app portion, which is DNF install Codium Zipper and Codium. Make sure to use sudo on this or it'll fail. At this point, I decided it would be a good idea to drop a couple of the icons on the launcher, just so I had them for future use. Now, you may want to do this as well. It's up to you. Now that all that stuff is over with, it's time for an easy installation. Let's just get Chromium, uh, because sometimes you just need a Chrome-based browser for apps and testing. And we can do this just from the Applications Installer. In conclusion, I feel this sort of work to get a system that behaves the way a user would like shouldn't really be necessary. I feel Fedora may be good for the intermediate to advanced user, but a newer person may run into a lot of issues here. I hope I've helped someone work through some of those problems with this video. Shout out to user Linux3D who gave me some tips during my live stream in particular about RPM Fusion. Feel free to leave your tips and tricks for Fedora here and let me know of any things I may have missed that might help others. If you like this video, toss it a like and hit that subscribe button. And if you didn't, well, you know what to do. Thanks for watching.